This is your live streaming coverage of Microsoft Build Day 2. And I am joined now by partner director Amanda Silver and senior program manager Mark Wilson. Tom, Thomas, we're going to talk to me about IntelliCode. Yep. And IntelliSense, IntelliCode. This is yeah. how AI brings the wisdom of your community to your daily development work. Thank you for hanging out with me. I just like hanging out with you all because you always bring such cool stuff. And you have a laptop, which makes you twice as cool. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. So, Amanda, we got to do some cool demos in the keynote. Yeah, that was fun. But apparently there's even things I don't even I haven't even seen yet. Yeah, I mean there was there was no way that, you know, we have what an eight minute time span that we get to do that that demo. There's no way we could show all of the awesome stuff we're working on in that eight in those eight minutes. Cool. So I'm glad yeah. that you brought more awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you can explain and tell the code for folks who maybe didn't yeah, see that. Yeah, I mean, demo. so we've been on a journey over the past couple of few years, basically trying to learn from developers what white space exists. Basically, what are what problems do they continue to have to deal with? And so what we heard from a lot of developers are a few things. Number one, it's really hard to onboard a new developer onto the team. Um, both from the perspective of the new junior developer who's trying to kind of, you know, get integrated, but also from senior developers. It takes a lot of time for them to basically mentor those developers, uh, get onto their new team. Um, other things that we heard were that things like uh, code reviews have still way too much comments, kind of feedback going back and forth uh, after the code review is actually posted. Okay. And so what we tried to kind of think about is how could we help reduce both of those, the pain in both of those problems. And then the last thing that we heard that kind of relates to what we'll show you is that it's really hard to learn about a new API. It's hard to learn like a brand new tech, maybe an API that you haven't used before. What are the common calling patterns, coding conventions, and things like that for this particular API? Documentation helps, but let's be honest, especially when it's something inside your own organization, oftentimes there is no documentation that's associated with the uh, with the library that you're working with. So what we've been trying to do is to figure out how can we solve these problems. And, uh, and there's a group inside of Microsoft Research called the Research in Software Engineering Team. And so we work with them a lot to try to figure out how we can use cutting edge science to basically bring it into your developer environment. So now IntelliCode basically takes uh, machine learning, you know, Machine learning for those who actually work on it, and AI for those who just want to market it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, and how can we take those machine learning models and basically integrate them into Visual Studio VS Code so that you can have a really productive developer experience? I know you've brought me some cool demos, but before you start, I want to ask this question. 20 years ago, maybe almost 25 years ago, when, in, when I first saw IntelliSense for the first time, when I hit dot, yeah. My professors in college said that's going to rot your brain. Uh -huh. You only real pro syntax highlighting, syntax coloring, it's all a mistake. You should do it on a green screen. It should be as basic as possible. At, how much of this is removing thought versus removing the boring stuff that I really shouldn't have to worry about? Like I worry as a programmer, am I just going to hit tab and it'll do all the work for well, me? Well, it's all just levels of, of abstraction, right? We don't code in zeros and ones. We don't code in assembler anymore, right? And there are purists who would say that we should all be coding in assembler. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't see the difference between, you know, coding in a programming language that actually has nice ergonomics uh, mm. versus having IntelliSense. I mean, it depends what problem, Scott, you want to have in your buffer, right? I mean, if you want to have a problem in your buffer that's about, you know, can I remember this 30-item long list of possible methods and properties, well, great, that's fine, go at it. But uh, honestly, I'd rather have the business problem in my mind or the technical problem I'm trying to solve. And that's where we're at with, uh, with IntelliCode. We want to, we want to make uh, the interesting bits of your job more interesting mm. and take away the kind of tedious, repetitive, boring bits. I like But that. there's nothing that we are hiding from you in this process, right? The only thing that we're doing is when you think about a completion list um, that basically are all of the API calls that you could make on a member, where you used to have a, a alphabetically sorted list or a most recently sorted list, we now add a little bit of intelligence to basically guide you to what the members should be, if the, which, what, what members you should be calling. Mm -hmm. So you're giving a prescription, but it's not an intense prescription. It's not a thou must do this. It's stronger so. guidance based on developers who have tread this path before. Right. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I mean, wh where they've been, you can go without having to cut your knees. <laughs> and what's nice about that is that I have, we think we've all been there. We've been programming. And I've said, you know, I've got it in my head, but I'm IO bound. 
-hmm. And these, this disk isn't as fast as I need it to be, and now I can not worry. I can think about the business problems exactly. and get it out. You've so got you, that kind of train of consciousness thing going on. You want to have yeah. that going so on. Yeah, so this right? is going to smooth the path. I like that. That's so you've got some demos. Do. Maybe we can switch over for to your sure. laptop yeah, and sure. take a look at that. So, I mean, let's start with uh, something that hopefully some, most of you have seen before. before we, right, there we go. Make sure. Good. Are we, up are on, we screen. on screen? Yes, sir. So I'm just going to show you a basic IntelliCode demo here. So here I'm working on a string. I've, I've got a program here that does some manipulations on uh, uh, temperature uh, arrays, OK? Uh, and I'm going to go look at this string. You can see here, Scott, that um, I, I've got a lot of starred recommendations here at the top there. What those are is uh, for the context that I'm in, the coding context that I'm in. So it knows I'm in a string inside an if statement where the string came in as an argument, OK? Um, it can say the most likely thing I'm going to want to fill in here is, is to use a length. Well, that's logical, right? Because it's a test. Uh, I'm going to want to do some kind of test here. Um, and even as I start to elaborate this, and I'm going to start to do something for Kelvin here, um, I'll do S, and here's substring again. Well, hang on, that, that S dot was different than the it first one. It was, and that's because now there's a different context. I'm actually a little bit further down my line of thinking, and uh, the uh, system is aware of that context and knows what's going on. Well, there's look, a star there, hang too. Hang on, there's look, a star look what's inside. going on, right? So we've got S dot length here, oh. because here, inside a substring, mm -hmm. the most likely thing here is that I'm going to need to return some kind of number that's going to give me the right argument for that substring. OK, mm. so those recommendations are extremely context sensitive, right? Um, and, and so we've learned those across a whole farm, actually thousands, of GitHub repos. OK, they're um, uh, essentially the, the wisdom of the entire C Sharp open source community that's out there in the open. Um, we have distilled that down and brought it to your point of need here. So you can actually know what's, uh, what's the most likely recommendation there. So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Um, and you're not sending my code to the cloud to be chewed on. Ab absolutely not, no. So this actually is trained entirely on open source code. But um, you're probably wondering to yourself, well, gosh, that's great for classes and members that are, that are out there in the open. Um, mm -hmm. But what if those classes and members are my stuff? Right, right? exactly. More than string. I've got right, some okay. local class. Well, the good news there is, if I just quickly flip over here, we actually have a capacity here to train on your own code. OK? So if I want to see stuff that's completions on my own code, I can absolutely do that. And even there, we want to take care of your um, intellectual property rights. We want to be very careful about that. So all that we do, um, and this is kind of nerdy, but this is a nerdy place. We're OK to talk nerdy, right? It is uh, safe, space. Um, safe space. Safe space, good. Um, what we do is we, do, we run a pre-compilation on your local machine, right. okay? and we extract from there just a summary file. Okay. Ah. Now, that summary file just contains what we need to answer the question, given this location in code, what would be the most likely completion for this class? Okay. So you can imagine it's a bunch of numbers in a big tree. Okay. Uh, that's the way that you would represent that. We send that to the cloud, just that tiny summary file. Not enough for you to compile, not enough for anything of that sort. Send that to the cloud. There we do some learning process. But you'll notice that I'm logged in here to uh -huh. Visual Studio. Indeed. And what that means is that we can keep that model that we have generated for you personal just to you until you choose to share it. Right? I see. So it comes back down to your machine. And you see we give you the option right here to, to share that model with someone else. If you want to do that, and you're working in a small team, you want to sort of give this a go, um, you can do that and then use the add model function to just add it in. And this works just like it does in live share. Um, so if I hit share, it pops a, a sharing link in my board, and in my clipboard, and I can just paste that right into here. And that's the binary model. I'm not sharing any code there. I'm sharing no code, the wisdom. Just the distilled wisdom. The distilled exactly. wisdom. Exactly right. And so now I can actually go ahead and, uh, and use that wisdom as I'm coding. And so I'll see completions on my own classes. Mm. So, and this that, is available today. Like that's people, available right now. People a may have this and not even know they have this. You know what? If you have VS 2019 16.1, if you have the preview that's been shipped at the com at conference, to, you have this in the box right now. And in fact, we're, we're on by default um, for all of the C Sharp, XAML, and C++, and JavaScript, TypeScript workloads. Okay? So you can, you can find that. The actual feature that you're looking at here, I should mention, is a preview feature. So if I go to Tools Options, I just want people to know about this, and I tap in IntelliCode. And if you've got a build that's um, of 16.1, you'll see that you have these preview features. So you see that I have them all enabled here, because I'm doing lots of demos of all these wonderful, cool features. Um, I can turn those on, but they're preview features. They're not quite ready. So you know the way we work these days is we get these features out in preview, and we make sure everyone's had a chance to, to use them, refine them to beautiful 
before we're uh, ready to call them down. We've only got about six minutes left, and I want to make sure I see the stuff that I haven't seen before. Oh, you want to see the magic? You, were, you came here, and you were like, oh, you wait, <laughs> Hanselman. I, I'll show you something you've never I, seen before. I, you want to this see is, something? This is I don't believe cool. it. Something, I don't believe it. Something beyond awesome. And, and it takes a lot for me to say that, because, you know, I'm a modest Englishman, and that's what we do. All right. OK? Blow my mind. So here we go, Scott. Um, take a look at this. Here's a, a fairly standard programming problem, right? Um, I've got my uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion here, and I'm, I, I, I hate the code smell of having these constants in my code here. Uh, oh, I, you've got it a couple places, and you it, did it a couple different ways. Oh, it's spread all over the place, and not only that, the variable names are different too. Yeah. So I've got different usages down, down string here. And it's a bit, a bit ugly. And what I want to do is to move to a, um, a nice little helper function that I've, I've got loaded up down uh, in, in the temperature conversions class that you'll see in my solution there. And, you know, here I am doing this tedious task. So, you know, great. I've, I've got that done. And, oh, you need an extra Oh, I think there. I'm missing a brace there. So I got that done. That's great. Now I've got to go look for all the others. And while I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, do I really want to go ahead and write that regular expression? Well, they're all kind of shaped different. Yeah, so there's slight differences. That is a different variable. The variable name. name's different. You'll notice the white space is different here. And, you know, I've got to go through them all. And I'm thinking, if I'm going to write that red line. Well, and with all due respect, I'm seeing a lot of, like, right arrow, right arrow, right arrow, right arrow. <laughs> it's, like, you know. it's dull, right? It is. It's dull to watch. You know, it, it, it's... it's, it's <laughs> I mean, it's just awful, isn't it? Okay. I mean, Make it stop, Mark. I, 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 Are you asleep yet? <laughs> I am. Yeah, I thought so. And didn't I promise you to keep you awake? You surely did. See that? That should keep you awake. Hang on. Suggested change. When did it, when did it know that was a good idea? How it did... knew, Scott, right after Because you did something twice? The second example, because this is program synthesis by, uh, by example, um, let me know that actually what I want to do is this. And you see I get in a little preview here? Ta -da! Hang on, I've seen this before because I was in Excel and I typed Sunday, Monday, and it goes Tuesday. Yep, exactly the same underlying technology, but the same team. Yeah, by the same team. By the same team, the program synthesis uh, by example team. Okay, have, have done this work for us, and uh, this is actually currently not out, but it will be soon. Just like only on your computer, kind of a thing. It's on like four or five <laughs> four or other five computers, computers, but uh, yeah, exactly. So, so this sounds like this is just a taste of the kind of stuff that you're going about to unleash on the planet. Yeah, I mean, you know, for us, we really kind of view the IntelliCo Charter as very broadly, how can we take machine, machine learning techniques and apply them to software development? And so what we want to do is make every developer and every development team more productive yeah. based on this kind of technology. Right, and we can do this right here at your point of need. Mm -hmm. Wow, when, when, when and where do I, like, so, how so do I basically, get this, when do I, just, where do I go? If you just get the, the Visual Studio IntelliCode extension, yep. uh, which will actually start to be included by default as of 16.1, okay. uh, then you'll start to basically get a steady stream of these enhancements. So oh, it's going to happen automatically. Yep. So hit us up on AKAMS WAC IntelliCode. Okay, AKA.MS okay. AKA slash In WAC. IntelliCode. IntelliCode. And then that's where I can get my extensions. You'll and it'll just extension. always be updated. And this works on VS Code as well. Mm. So we actually have six supported languages for that um, IntelliSense feature we showed you earlier. Okay. Um, and so that, that is, <coughs> you know, if, if you're in uh, VS Code, you're going to get JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, Python, all in VS Code. Um, and then on the VS side, we have C, C++, C Sharp, and XAML. Wow. OK. And this yeah. is just going to keep getting better. This is yeah. continuous right. improvement yep. in the world of code. Yeah. Yep. Any, anytime we can learn something from the code or the metadata that you've got, we're going to go ahead and, and, and do that and bring it to where you need it. And if you're here at Build, you can go and see folks at the booth. Yes. yes. We have a booth right as you're walking into the big, what do we call this, expo area? Yep. Uh, there, Don't miss us. Where we basically have the entire team right there working on Visual Studio Live Share, yeah. IntelliCode, other things like that. And then we have a specific booth. Yeah, and we have uh, some fun challenges there as well. So if you're here at the show, you really want to come along because you're going to get a chance to win one of these cool t shirts. Actually, it's true. You know, my, you know? it's dangerous to code alone. <laughs> yeah. If you want to win one of these cool t shirts, you get yourself you along to our booth. Um, and you're going to take a few challenges, just try out some of this cool tech. And uh, just for the fun of doing that, you get a free T-shirt and into a raffle to come have dinner with the team tonight. Are you seriously raffling off dinner with nerds? Totally. It's true. That is a really good <laughs> idea. I think a couple of people who've been in the audience that have been asleep are just like, hmm? <laughs>
dinner with other programmers? <laughs> <laughs> and if it wasn't clear, that I would love to do that. The raffle dinner is on us. So. Yeah, oh, you thanks. pay for it too. Yeah, they don't uh -huh. even have to. Pay. Yeah, they don't have to pay their way. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. I appreciate you chatting with me because this uh, this stuff just keeps getting better and better. And I, when I first saw IntelliCode, I was like. What's happening here? And now all these neurons are starting to fire about, oh, we could do this, and we could do it's that. It's funny you should say neurons, because all of this is based on, you know, distributed neural nets and that kind of technology. So yeah. Fantastic. I am learning all about neural nets and how I'm going to apply that <laughs> to my code. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more from Build.